Take a moment to pray with me, please. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you. Fill my lungs with your breath, my mouth with your message, that all that I say and all that I do bring honor and glory and praise to you and to you alone, O Lord. Amen. So today I, I titled the sermon, the, the Treasure of Church Membership. So what is treasure? What do we treasure? My guess is if we asked each person, the first thing you'd say you treasure is your family. And then I'm sure we would get into some of our stuff, because we all have stuff that we, that we treasure, right? Or we wouldn't have house, houses filled with it. But treasure refers to something that is special, something that is important or valuable. If we see church membership as something to be treasured, we would not view it as being inconsequential or trivial. For some reason, the Lord's Day, Sunday, once considered a special day dedicated to the worship and service of God. How many people would spend Sundays, you did church and you did family dinner, so you stayed at church all day, amen? Amen. But today it's treated like any other day, even to Christians. And local church life, once considered the center of indispensable relationships, is now treated like an extracurricular activity rather than the essential of ingredient in Christian life. Church is important. Being a member of a local congregation is important. It is indeed a treasure. Church membership is not merely enrollment for the sake of having your name on the list, nor is it solely an issue of a privilege. Did you know that outside of Canada and the United States, especially um, in lands where being a believer may well entail considerable cost, it is rare to find a Christian who remained unconnected to a local congregation. In other words, in other countries, being connected, being a membership of, being a member of a local congregation is extremely important as it should be to us. You see, being a believer is synonymous with being a member of the local congregation, both in the Word of God and in historical experience, and in, in the experience of Christians outside of North America also. In some countries, membership is too often associated with paying dues, performing meaningless rituals, abiding by some silly rules, and simply having one's name on that role that it's never even looked at. But the truth is, the New Testament presents quite a different picture of membership in the local congregation. To be a Christian without holding membership in a congregation would be like being a football player without a team. Perhaps you enjoy playing the game, but you really don't compete. Being a Christian without holding membership in a local congregation is somewhat like being a tuba player in a band. Though you may play very well, the tuba by itself loses its melodious bass in harmony with the entire band when you are all together. To be a Christian without holding membership in a local congregation is to be a sheep without a flock, exposed to danger. And also to be a Christian without accountability to a local congregation is like being an orphan with no family. New Testament writers frequently address or speak to the word church, often as church is, plural. The word church occurs over 100 times in the English Standard Version of the New Testament. It is indisputable that the overwhelming number of occurrences of this word in the Greek text clearly speaks to the local congregation. That's how important it is. Have you realized that nine New Testament books were written to specific local churches? We have Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And also four of Paul's letters were written to specific people to address specific church concerns. That's a lot of references to the local church. That's how important the local church is. 
Accordingly, it would be fair to say that the local congregation loomed large in the estimate of the New Testament writers. We know from the New Testament writers that Christians valued their church membership. We should see their practice as a model for us to emulate. If they treat uh, church membership as the expected practice of all who name, whose name they call Christ, all believers in Jesus Christ, then we're obligated to adopt that practice into our own day. Acts 2, 41 says, Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000. We are adding new members today, not quite 3,000, but we're working on it. Think of all the work we have to do for that, Pastor Nicole. <laughs> but wouldn't that be a blessing? That would be a blessing. Can you imagine? Note that they added to the church. Obviously, there were already a large number of church members, and now they've gained 3,000 more. We are so blessed today to be welcoming our new members to this congregation of Good Shepherd United Methodist Church. Membership is seen as a commitment. It is a statement of purpose in which our Christian brothers and sisters commit themselves to the body of Christ. They are uniting with this congregation and accepting responsibility to fulfill the purpose of God through investing their spiritual gifts in the life of the congregation that God has chosen for them. Among the benefits of church membership are the following truths taught in the Word of God. Membership in the local congregation identifies you as a true, genuine believer. Membership in the local congregation provides a spiritual family that is available to support you and love you and encourage you in your walk with Jesus Christ. Membership in the local congregation of the Lord gives us a place to discover and use our gifts in ministry. Our reading today reminds us that we are many parts of one body and that we all belong to each other, every one of us. Paul uses the concept of the human body to show us how we should live and work together. Just as the parts of our body function under the direction of one brain, so Christians are to work together under the command of one authority, Jesus Christ. God blessed each and every one of us with gifts so that we could build up his church. We must then realize that all gifts, all abilities, all talents are indeed a gift from God. We must understand that not everyone has the same gift. We must know who we are and what we do best. And we must dedicate our gifts to God's service, not to our own personal success. Also, we must be willing to utilize our gifts wholeheartedly and not holding back anything from God's service. God wants all of you, not just a little piece of you, not just an hour a week of you. God wants all of you. Our role is to be faithful and to seek ways to serve others with what Christ has blessed us with. Hebrews 10.25, as we heard just earlier, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I cannot tell you how many times when somebody hears that I'm a pastor, the first thing they have to do is apologize for their language, the second thing they do, Pastor Nicole, is give you the excuse on why they don't come to church. Well, we haven't even asked them if they go to church. They just hear we're a pastor and they're confessing it right away to us. Why I don't go to church? I've got six reasons, Pastor. The Bible clearly, clearly tells us, do not neglect meeting together, period. To neglect Christian meetings is to give up the encouragement and the help of other Christians. We gather together to share our faith, to share our love, to share our strength in the Lord. Church membership is truly a gift. We respond to gifts with gratitude. 
One key way we express our gratitude is to serve like Jesus did. And like he told us very clearly that we should be doing. When we receive a gift of, with true appreciation, we naturally want to respond to the giver. What do we usually say? usually say thank you. Back in the old days, you did thank you cards. How many had to write out thank you cards for any gift you received? Our response to Jesus Christ, the giver of salvation, and the church, our thanks is serving. Our thanks is serving as a natural outflow of the joy that we feel knowing that we have salvation. We consider it a privilege to serve Jesus Christ. So we look for opportunities in the church to serve others. And this church has gone above and beyond that this week with the Thanksgiving basket. I apologize, how many? 68. 68 families. We don't even have 68 people in here, but 68 families are going to have food on Thanksgiving. <coughs> so I applaud you. I think that is just a tremendous, tremendous effort that is being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, that is participating in the membership. So I encourage you, as good as that feels to give, don't you want your friends and neighbors to feel that good also? To have that opportunity to be a part of this type of family, the family of Jesus Christ? It's only going to happen, my friends, if you invite them to the church. Amen? Amen. Amen.